What's up guys, I'm Chris Lado. Welcome to the channel. I was a F-16 pilot for 18 years and now I'm spending my time researching this amazing unidentified aerial phenomena. It's been an exciting week actually in the UAP space. Jeremy Corbell released a video from the Omaha or the triangle video I made. I think this is actually what we're looking at. I'll go through that a little bit. The Aguadilla 2013 incident. I've been researching that hard this past week and I found some pretty cool stuff, including what I think is probably the most clearest video of these things. It is crazy. I see tons of just disinformation, wrong information on the in internet. The first of which is the Aguadilla incident from 2013. I've been researching this hard and this is not a Chinese lantern, okay? I promise this is not a Chinese lantern, which is that's the running idea right now. Everyone says it's just a Chinese lantern. I'm like, no, man, it is definitely not a Chinese lantern. I'm gonna show you why it's not in this video. Jeremy Corbell released another video from the Omaha, the Viper team, visual recognition team. So exciting video, a lot of information. Let's get right to it. First thing guys, don't forget to like and subscribe if you are enjoying this content. It really helps the channel, motivates me to put out as much content as possible. So looking at Jeremy Corbell's video, it, it honestly looks like what I thought the pyramid video should be. It seems like this is what is being recorded in the pyramid video. If you look based on the colors and the flashes. So I looked basically to try and count the flashes of this main section here. This is the best section here where they're crossing. Okay, you have three, they're in focus and then they go out of focus back in. You can tell with the bouquet. And I went through again, frame by frame on the video, that section, okay, right where those three are crossing. I think that's the best. Right now they're out of focus. You can see here that red color. And so I go frame by frame and I'm counting the flashes again. So what I'm expecting to see is those strobes. You know, I notice again, they're flashing. This is what strobe lights would look like normally these strobe lights three white flashing lights one on each wingtip and one at the end of the fuselage and they give a double flash every second they are very bright and intend to attract the attention during flight because they are very distracting and blinding if you taxi behind a colleague who might have forgotten to switch them off and by the way when you look into a sky full of stars and you spot flashing lights those are the strobe lights of an airplane and not a satellite <laughs> could be a uap bright strobes and this does not look like a strobe light okay if you go and watch a actual it's going to be a bright flash okay much much brighter than this so that's what i thought looked weird under the mvgs with the the triangle video is that it didn't flash so so bright and, and this makes more sense to me so this makes a lot of sense and especially the color like the red orange color or white light is non-compatible with mvgs okay here is your frames remember this is 30 to a second so you have to change the decimals okay and we go frame by frame here there's another flash okay so 1.75 seconds in between these two I just focused on this top one. I didn't, the other ones are also flashing, it looks like, but I didn't count those. There's another flash, okay? So I go through that section, flash. And that was it, right at the top. It's like a blue flash, which is also weird, right? Seeing these blue lights uh, is just strange to me. So this is the flash pattern again. You'll notice just like in the triangle video, it's not like a normal airliner. A normal airliner is gonna strobe at Every second, normally, is gonna be a bright strobe. Okay, maybe there's different strobe patterns, but this one, you have 1.75 seconds between, and then you have 1.2 seconds, and then 1.75, and then 1.2, 1.75. So I guess this could be some sort of pattern, but it, as far as I know, it doesn't look like any regular airline or aircraft pattern that I've ever seen. So that's the Jeremy Corbett, that's what I could add. And I think we have a better, video of this. I think it's all related. So let's move on to the Aguadilla UAP. Aguadilla incident 2013. And I got a, uh, several comments saying, hey, that's already been debunked. It's obviously a Chinese lantern. And I was like, what the hell is a Chinese lantern? You know, so I started researching on Chinese lanterns. And let's show you what a Chinese lantern looks like. So this is what everyone seems to think. The Aguadilla UAP that's tracked with this high quality thermal camera is just a Chinese lantern, which just seemed ridiculous to me. So I started researching it and I got about 
four or five hours into researching and I was dealing with the, trying to translate the GPS coordinates. Okay, because there's many different ways to do GPS coordinates. And so I was in that hell of translating all these coordinates and I found an amazing report. Okay, so this has already been reported on very well, by the way, the 2013 Agua Dilo Puerto Rico report. This thing is legit. This is what I would expect from a real report written by people that know science. They know how to actually investigate something and get the information in there. Okay, it's not just like I put a video up on YouTube and I say it's a Chinese lantern and now I get to win the debate. You know, just that's not how it should work anyway. So here we are, this amazing, you can just go here. It was done by Explore SCU. Okay, so they are related to uh, UAPs, but this is the full report and this thing is awesome. Amazing read, it's long, okay? There's a lot of appendixes, 162 pages, but it's, it, it's not so much. The original part is, is 48 pages. We'll, we'll go through it shortly, okay? So this is done by SCU Scientific Coalition for Ufology. is open to all scientific-based analysis of this report. So that's who did it. The authors of this report, the six authors of this report all have scientific backgrounds, including degrees in chemistry, physics, mathematics, and environmental science. Their work backgrounds are also scientific with experience in the air defense industries, semiconductors, as well as various patents. Together, they have 86 years combined experience studying UFO phenomenon. A copy of their backgrounds is listed in Appendix A. A minimum of 1,000 man hours were spent in the analysis of this video over the course of one and a half years. Every effort was made to objectively evaluate the data obtained and ensure the protection of the source's identity according to his wishes. Non-disclosure agreements were signed by all parties which stipulated details would remain secure. So, a lot of information. Six authors, scientific backgrounds, and they have access to a ton of information. So not only do they have the original video from an official source, they also have the radar information. Okay, so authenticity of the video used in the report was corroborated using radar data obtained from the USAF 84th Radar Evaluation Squadron Group. So they have radar data confirming that this aircraft was where it said it was, matching the, the lat longs that are in the video. So they corroborated that it came from this aircraft using the radar data, and they have witness testimony as well. Pretty amazing. So they have the original high def video, they have uh, radar data plus witness statements. So pretty awesome. And they write a, a damn good report. So it's just the idea if you go out there and just say that this Aguadilla incident is a Chinese lantern, it's just obvious you haven't spent any time <laughs> reading the report. I mean, you have to acknowledge the report, okay? You don't to get to just go online and say it's Chinese lantern, right? So I just wanna go through real quick the witness testimony uh, just highlight what they saw and then give you the, the summary conclusion. The witness testimony was from a secondary witness whose direct testimony cannot be discussed in this report due to a request of anonym anonymity. Additionally, it was a secondary witness who contacted this, this team's investigator, labeled a special investigator, and provided the original video. The primary witness is referred to in the remainder of the report as witness A. Similarly, the second witness, witness A is an officer and pilot employed by the CBP Division of Homeland Security. Witness A was the pilot of the aircraft and one of four crew members that witnessed the event from the aircraft. Witness B, who asked not to be identified, was the only means of contact with witness A, who was not willing to talk to us at the time of the initial investigation of this report. Questionnaires were given to both witnesses A and B. Witness B in turn provided one of the questionnaires to witness A. The completed questionnaires were then returned to this investigative team by witness B. Multiple phone calls were made with Witness B, as well as a personal meeting with two of this team's investigators on February 15, 2014 at an undisclosed location. The following testimony is from Witness B, and it describes what was seen by Witness A, essentially, uh, prior to the thermal video. Okay, so I'll just go through this section here. Witness A and his crew took off on a routine aircraft patrol the Puerto Rican coast on the night of April 25, 2013. The DHC-8 Turboprop aircraft took off from the runway heading east at 9.16 p.m. The aircraft contained four crewmen, including the primary witness, a co-pilot, and two instrument operators, one manning the onboard radar system and the other manning the thermal image mounted camera system. Witness A looked out his left window and saw a pinkish to reddish light over the ocean northwest of the airport. The light was moving towards the airport. He believed the light to be at a higher elevation than his aircraft, which was at 1,600 to 2,100 feet based on the radar data and the thermal video system engaged a moment before. The pilot confirmed visual contact with the tower personnel. The tower personnel also confirmed visual contact, meaning they all saw the object. As the target approached shore, its light went out. 
The pilot then requested monitoring of the craft with onboard surveillance equipment. According to the reporting witness, the onboard radar did not pick the object up, but the thermal imaging camera did detect the object. The CBP's DH-8 aircraft are equipped with Sea View marine search radar primarily for detecting sea craft. At this time, Witness A no longer had visual contact with the object, but did see the object in its thermal imaging display in the cockpit, along with the thermal imaging display in the rear of the aircraft under control of the instrument operator. He continued tracking the object while on routine patrol in the aircraft. The pilot made no attempt to intercept the unknown target, nor did the target seem to react in any way to the tracking aircraft. Witness B stated the close presence of this unknown object caused the delay of a commercial aircraft's departure from the airport. This statement from the witness could not be verified. Okay, so based on the radar data, this is where the plane is. It takes off here, does a slow climb, turning, they're like turning on their systems, okay? And now it basically does another turn here, picks up the object, I believe, you know, visually they pick it up. And then it starts to turn here, and now when we pick up the beginning of the video, the Aguadilla video, uh, it's basically right here. And then the, the aircraft, the tracking aircraft is in a left-hand turn pretty much most of the time. There was radar data, it was interesting, which is 90 miles away. So based on the curvature of the earth, it, it can't pick up anything below, I believe, 3,000 feet, I believe. Uh, but basically there was, they had 43 radar hits in the case of 10 minutes. So it's, it sweeps every 12 seconds. There was, I think, eight minutes of continuous radar hits from something over here. So they're basically, something is returning radar energy over here for a full eight minutes straight before this event from zero one to zero one ten hours okay so i just copied and rotated that picture okay so we have the tracking aircraft okay as you can see it's flying over here so it's done its first loop and it's basically right here at 012208 so the first time it picks up lock on the target. And so what they have here is basically, this is the first one, right? So the tracking aircraft's here, the DHC-8, and then it, it picks up the UAP here. And that's why they can't, there's nothing in the background to confirm its actual location, because uh, initially I guess just over the sea. So they can't really confirm, it's somewhere along this line of sight. Okay, so this is an estimate, um, but they think it's traveling along this darker blue line okay and when it turns red here then they know they can base it off of background information okay so there's that one we go to 0220 okay so that's like this last kind of ambiguous no sorry 0226 this is their last ambiguous one and then 02 or 2238 right here they know it's right over the runway okay so they can confirm it based on background information and they confirm it here and they confirm it here. Okay, so it turns. <laughs> so it turns and comes back this way. Okay, so it can't just be going with the wind like some Chinese lantern uh, with this amazing propulsion system. Um, so they know exactly where the tracking airplane is. They know where it's looking and now they can basically nail down exactly or within pretty close reasoning on where this actual UAP is and they can even tell when it goes behind trees okay so they can size it and see exactly uh, where it is so they went in detail this is the flight path that it flies uh, this is where it splits here and they have it going in the water basically out here so it's not like a Chinese lantern could do this 180 degree turn and the next thing is the speed okay so they calculate the speed and it Although the speed of the object is fairly constant and normally varies from 70 miles to 110 miles per hour, it is clear that the object accelerates and decelerates during this portion of the video. Underwater. They spend a lot of time talking about the underwater part. So you can see they basically go through when the object goes underwater, they can detect there is a splash. So they go through here actually how it entered the water and here is actually the splitting. Okay, this is another super interesting point they bring up about how the object splits. And they go through how it splits and what they find is that it actually doubled in size and then it split. They went into more detail. So basically each pixel of, uh, of the device, the thermal imager, sets a certain temperature and you can tell based on the temperature spread um, what it is. So what they did is they went to like pixel level information and gave you a, basically a heat temperature grid. And so you can see here, Prior to the splitting, it doubles in size effectively. Effectively doubles in size and then splits. And they relate it, it's like a cell splitting, like mitosis or something. 
something creepy like that. They do like a surface plot as well. So you'll see as the frames go by, it doubles in size essentially, and then it splits into two objects. They argue the temperature, they say the temperature of the, of the object is right around 105 degrees. And I love how they do this as well. They basically figured this out through cow data. <laughs> so look at this. So they know going over a pasture, the hottest pixel taken from each cow was circled in white and they're able to determine the, the rough temperature of a cow and then they can determine that this is slightly hotter. So it's a little bit hotter than a cow. So based on all that information, I mean, amazing, amazing report. I think they actually covered everything. I didn't see any gaps in it. So let's look at the summary. We believe that there is sufficient information in the video to characterize this object as three to five feet in size. The shape is circular to oval, but changes. Airspeed varies from 70 to 120 miles per hour, capable of changing direction. Internal temperature of about 105 degrees Fahrenheit, usually in the center of the object and exterior temperatures above the ambient air temperature. Capable of traveling at low altitude through a residential area, able to enter the water with no obvious splash or impact. Underwater speed varies from 39 to 95 miles per hour. Ability to exit and re-enter water. And the capability of splitting into two independent parts that appear to be the same size as the original object based on its infrared signature. Awesome. And even better, an examination of possible explanations. Entire classes of animals and man-made objects may be eliminated by comparison of properties attributed to the unknown object. The most likely explanations of the unknown object are discussed here. Possible hoax. One of the first possibilities examined was that of a hoax. Authors spent hundreds of hours saying it's not a hoax. They went through frame by frame for each pixel to see if the video was changed. They got the video from an original source and it was corroborated with radar data from a separate source. And I love this examination of possible explanations. Here, here's a whole page on why it's not a Chinese lantern. <laughs> I love this part. Although it is difficult to give this serious consideration, as mentioned previously, there was a poor quality copy of this video released on the internet that caused a lot of speculation with the leading explanation being a balloon carried by the wind. The balloon theory posits that a balloon was basically stationary and the movement seen in the video was actually that of the aircraft as it moved in a semi-circle around the balloon. There are multiple reasons why the object in the video cannot be explained as a balloon and they are listed as follows. This argument is very similar to the go fast argument. It's basically the same argument, okay, that it's, it's just a Chinese lantern balloon. First, the object speed was too great. So we know based on the, the corroborated data of where the tracking aircraft is that the object was moving faster much faster than the wind, up to 120 miles per hour. The object changed directions multiple times, okay? Can't be explained. Temperature information from a thermal video indicates that the object was hotter than the ambient and the center of it was near 105 degrees Fahrenheit with a cooler exterior. So a balloon, a Chinese lantern, for instance, you remember I showed that fire is gonna be down at the bottom. It's not gonna be at the center. You're gonna be able to track that. And that fire is gonna be super hot. It's not gonna be 105 degrees. So it's gonna show up at the max, max level of the uh, thermal imaging system. The object impacts the water. <laughs> That's just insane. So it's, it impacts the water and it appears to not slow down at all. The splitting of the object into two parts also eliminates a balloon as a possibility. Yes, it splits into two parts, which I, I don't know, could possibly be a reflection, a weird reflection like underwater, if it is actually underwater, I'm not sure. Line of sight movement seen during the video based on the latitude launched to the CBT aircraft eliminates any possibility of the object being a balloon. So it just the corroborated radar data matching the video lat long is just, is huge information. I mean, that basically rules out uh, the balloon. The other thing, flying animals. I love this one. Seemed ridiculous, I was like, flying squirrel. And then it was, uh, no, birds are actually flying as well. So they look into this, could it possibly be a bird? And they say, no. The only viable alternative they give is drones. And they even say an explanation worthy of consideration would be some new type of military drone that could fly and go into the water. So a transmedium drone, they, they do exist. So it could be some new technology type drone is what they possibly think. But they say there's still two capabilities that such a drone would need to match of the unknown object. That is the ability to move in and out of water at high speed and the ability to split into two parts with both sections capable of independently traversing through air and water. That's <laughs> just... Uh, it's just amazing. And that's the end, basically. Commercial military aircraft larger than eight feet are summarily dismissed. So the only thing they could possibly think is it could be some new high-tech drone, as long as that drone can somehow mask its uh, thermal signature and fly into 
the water at high speeds and split it into two parts. Again, excellent, excellent report, amazing video. I mean, this just seems like really the best case so far for this uh, UAP. And I, so when I was researching this one, I found an, a very interesting video, okay? This is from Agua Dia as well, which by the way means the water dia. This is from November 1st, the same year, 2013. And watch this from this guy, TVOPR. I love this video. This is the strangest. I'm here with Elmer and we're watching these flying saucers in the sky. Yeah, the lights are really doing a bad job here for us. So in this video, this guy, he sounds like he's from New Jersey or something. He says yeah. they're on the 107 Carretera. There's a lamp there, a lamp post, as soon as it gets by that. All right, there it is. What is this? Somebody tell us what the hell this thing is that's flying by us. Are these drones, what are they? I'm following this with my camera. These have been about 10 of these that have passed us by so far. And they're heading from east to west. This strange light, bright light that's just passing us by. I have no clue what these are. They start very low from down there. Here's another one. There's two of them. There's two more. There's two more folks, we're in the parking lot and I want you to see these because it's, nobody would, nobody would believe this. Right here I want you to, to notice there's no sound from the wind, okay, so there's no wind blowing and if you look at wind data, so USAF base, right, so nearby base at, uh, this is from WeatherSpark, Rafael Hernandez Airport, Puerto Rico. So right here, there's no reports. I just want you to see there's like no wind. So 5.82 miles per hour from the east, 3.45 miles per hour from the southeast. I mean, that's the almost non-reportable. You know, if you look here, 130.3 knots. So it is calm. There's like no wind. Measured wind speed at approximately 10 meters above an open field. So it's 30 feet high, but you're looking at very low winds. I mean, you know, less than five miles per hour. And yet, these things are flying by, right? And you would hear, we would hear wind. This is the strangest thing. There's no drone noise. There's no drone noise There's in the background. More. Are they drones? What are they? In a lantern, you would expect to see. They have the strangest lights. Some fire heat source in there. Very bright lights. Kind of like an orange colored light. I love this guy. His buddy's Elmer. Who are they? Elmer? They got, they're got the most strangest things I've ever seen. It's a scientific experiment. So I think this is the same phenomenon. the other one? I think it's the same thing. I'm out here with Elmer. And trust me, folks, I'm in the parking lot. There's Elmer. He's taking pictures with his camera. There's Elmer. We know what you look like, Elmer. Watching these things flying by us. They almost seem slow, but they're moving pretty fast. And at least 12 have passed by. This is the uh, Cajetera 107. Cajetera 107. This is where we're at, 107 Road. And this is facing west. And there, there they go. Okay, so this is that 107 he's talking about. Carretera 107. It's, it's not very long. I think it just goes from here to here. Uh, so it's somewhere along here. He's talking about where he's facing west. Okay, which is pretty similar, right? You remember those weird things came this way? So he's out here. He could be uh, anywhere, even up to here, I believe. This is also, oh, this turns into Cliff Road. Okay, so he said 107, Carretera. I assume he's, he's over here somewhere. Uh, and they're looking out to the west. Okay, so this is what I did. I made a little, 
a model again can't help it uh, put the uh, phone is here okay there's Elmer uh, there's a little car here and then a corrugated shipping container you can see uh, in the video uh, and based off of that I got the relative size um, and circle the relative size here uh, of, at 120. This is the, the final one that we actually see uh, when he says there's two coming. I tracked the last one there. It seemed like the clearest. So at 120 into the video, I made the mark there. Uh, at 204 is like the, the largest it appears. And then at 241, it's basically back to uh, around the same size as this again. So it means it's traveling in a, in a vector like this. And we just don't know the range again uh, to the object. So to estimate the range, I just went off of apparent size. Okay, so if this is a uh, container, corrugated container, it's uh, 8.3 feet tall. I measured it, or it was around 80 millimeters based on my screen size. Uh, and then I measured this, it was three millimeters, okay? Uh, and so based off of that, if we can use the Aguadilla as an example, they said the size of the object is three to five feet. Jeremy Corbell said that the, uh, the, the spherical objects that they just recorded from Omaha were at least six feet in diameter. So I use three to five feet. So based off of three to five feet, I estimate that here's that left point. And I, I guess he goes about 90 degrees, okay? I think that's how much he spans. You know, he's looking this way and then he turns and they're gone. It's about 90 degrees, okay? So I made a, a right angle triangle and then this distance here, I made X. Okay, if you split this in half, now basically this is the same distance, same distance. Uh, so that's how far they are going to travel. Okay, so basically I said there's that 80 millimeters equals eight feet. So that shipping container, and I estimated the shipping container is about 20 meters away. So if you look at the, the car is about three to four meters, and then I estimate it's about 20 meters, 20, 20 yards, 20, 20 yards. So around 60 feet away, okay? So I basically set that as the size reference. So if we measure three millimeters, uh, and that equals three feet, right, at the largest point, uh, X feet away, you can do some basic math here, and you see that uh, this X, which I think is the absolute closest this thing could ever possibly be, is 600 feet uh, at basically the uh, hypotenuse and it would be going nine miles per hour okay remember i showed the wind is less than five less than five knots so six miles per hour so it's going one and a half times the speed of the wind remember it is a little bit higher though so it doesn't sound so ridiculous now if it's five feet across okay what you get is you get an x distance of around a thousand feet uh, and then it would have to be going at least 15 miles per hour so a thousand feet, that's about three, you know, football fields in the air environment. That is very, very close. You know, we can't fly within a thousand feet in uh, conservative training rules and 15 miles per hour. That is the slowest I could see it actually traveling in the, in the video. It looks like it's traveling faster to me, but these are what I came up with my calculations. If it's six feet across as Jeremy Corbell uh, shows in the Omaha, then it would be a minimum of 1200 feet away and now it's going 18 miles per hour so almost three times uh, the speed of the wind you know if it's a thousand feet away uh, and about a 30 degree angle then the altitude is around 500 feet so it is higher there could be a higher wind there is it three times the wind i don't i don't think so so what do you guys think is this the aguadilla uap is this the jeremy corbell uap and the pyramid triangle video you know for me it's the that weird light you know it's that weird light it's just going to show up even here look you see like this super bright light not making any weird reflections in his phone right but this thing makes this blue light you know i, I don't know it just seems just seems weird to me you know that this will link to that you know it's crazy that light's just so weird and if you look at jeremy corbell's Just look in these lights past them. I mean, what is that, you know? I don't know. And to me, it just does not look like, and I mean, this is what your lanterns are gonna look like, you know? And they're not really moving. Like, they just show up for a few seconds on the show because it's not doing anything. They're just some random floaty lights, right? And they're basically gonna go up, you know? St. Rapunzel. 
So no, I think the Aguadilla incident, man, is so super legit. Look through that, that uh, report. They explain everything. They go through so much detail. They think about all of the possibilities for what it, what it could and couldn't be. And that's how a report should be done. It's just, you know, it's unfortunate that the debunkers somehow have the, they get to control the conversation. You know, it shouldn't be, oh, these are Chinese lanterns. Let's try and do all these investigative reporting to figure to debunk that. No, the report's been done. If they want to say it's Chinese lanterns and actually have anyone realistically listen to them, then they should have a good reason. And I couldn't find any. So exciting stuff, guys, still exciting. I, I'm just waiting for more and more information to come out. We have cameras everywhere. I think now that we start looking, we'll go back and, and find videos like this that just don't seem to make sense. And I, you know, even in the comments you'll see down there, it says, oh, these are Chinese lanterns, but those don't look like Chinese lanterns to me. All right, guys, please remember like and subscribe. Thank you for all your support. Thanks for watching and peace.